Hi there, I'm going to be remaking the Angular Momentum video, so if you've already seen that then this video is mostly going to be repeating a bunch of points from that. Angular Momentum, or Circular Flow, is probably what I think about the most when I make my own maps. There are some similar concepts to that of Linear Momentum, but there are some different rules that apply to it. Angular Momentum becomes relevant for combos of notes, so assuming your map is longer than two notes long, there will be some angular momentum involved. It is essentially the tendency to move one cursor in a clockwise or counterclockwise motion. Let's quickly consider the angular momentum for these three notes. If we move from 1 to 2 to 3, then note 4 should probably be somewhere in this direction, because the angular momentum of this pattern is moving in a clockwise pattern. If I was to draw a line from 2 to 3, then the next note following angular momentum will be on this left side of the line. It doesn't really matter much where on this side of the line the next note is if we were to consider only angular momentum. However, if we were to combine this theory with linear momentum, then a sharper angle, say in this direction, would be ideal, and a shallow, straighter angle like this would not be ideal. Your hand has a natural tendency to move in a circular motion, as you may notice when you sat idle during a break, or even when you start cursor dancing. How angular momentum works well can be visualised with a circular path, where here your acceleration is always pointed towards the centre of the circle, which is perpendicular to your direction of travel which is the tangent of any point of the circle. So through your combos there will always be some point where you are accelerating towards and groups of notes with good angular momentum will have a fairly common point where you are accelerating towards. Here is another way to evaluate angular momentum. Here is a star pattern. You'll have seen these around. These are a staple in most insane maps. The angular momentum through this pattern is counterclockwise. If I draw a path from 1 to 2, then 2 to 3, then if we imagine ourselves as a car driving along this path, once we reach 2, we would have to turn left to reach 3, and then on 3, we would have to turn left again to reach 4, left again to reach 5, and then if we were to continue angular momentum, 6 would be, guess what, on the left. Let's have a look at angular momentum in a ranked map. This map is Chihala Minoli Aitakata Sola, mapped by Monstrata. Monstrata's maps follow pretty intuitive angular momentum, in my opinion. I'm going to follow the general flow of the map with my cursor. Just notice the motion I'm taking. You'll see that I'm moving mostly in a counterclockwise direction. and then, after the stream, it reverses. Keep that in mind for a second. Keeping the same direction for angular momentum throughout the entire map is going to get pretty boring pretty quickly, so there needs to be ways of breaking the angular momentum and making it move in the other direction. So how would you go about doing that? The easiest way of doing that is with sliders. Even easier would be repeat sliders. For this pattern here we have 1, 2, 3 moving in a clockwise direction. All I have to do is put a reverse arrow on 3 and all of a sudden once we reach 3 we're moving in the opposite direction. Alternatively you could change angular momentum within the slider. So for this example we are moving into the slider with clockwise momentum and then within the slider we bend in an S shape and then we exit with counterclockwise momentum. The same can also be applied to streams as well, so we were to convert this to a stream, it'll follow pretty much the same concept as a slider. Stacking can help reduce or even reset the angular momentum through a combo. For this example, we are moving through 1, 2, 3 with counterclockwise momentum, and then the next combo is stacked beneath and on the stack our 
angular momentum resets and we can move in almost any direction we wanted to. So for this example I moved back in the clockwise direction. It's also worth noting that spinners, or even if I was to remove the spinner altogether, short or long breaks can help reset angular momentum as well. In this example I have a pattern moving in a counterclockwise pattern and then on the new combo it starts moving in a clockwise pattern so that it begins moving in the opposite direction on the downbeat. So we can listen to it, it goes one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four on the strong beat. Straight line combos can also help reset angular momentum because, well, there's no angle to move through so you can set your angular momentum to almost anything you want after it. It'll also work if I move these like that, but keep in mind the linear momentum rules I mentioned in the previous videos. Let's look at one more ranked map to finish off. This map is Hujijo Seitokai Shikobu Best Friends by Nodap. We're going to look at the jump pattern at the end of the second ki. It's moving mostly in a clockwise and then quite a lot happened there at the end, we're going to take a closer look at it. The first note to break angular momentum is this note here, which is the first note in the combo and also is on a downbeat. The vocals in the song also get quite intense here, so breaking angular momentum here is a pretty good choice. The next note to break angular momentum is this 5 here, which may seem like an odd choice, but I'd imagine what Nodap was doing is doing like a linear zigzag pattern through here, so doing this is fine. You could do this as well to continue angular momentum as well, but this is also acceptable. The final point where angular momentum gets broken is this 6 here, because there is an increase in the intensity of the vocals. It may seem weird that it's on a red tick, but that's justified because of the music. Hopefully you learnt something new there, that's pretty much it. Next video should be something new.